Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. Okay, people. We have an awesome streamer to show you tonight. Except for it's not a streamer. Um, a lot of people ask me if I only tie streamers, but I actually got started tying really small stuff. So this is relatively small. This is a size 18. And uh, Curtis and I actually really do fish a lot of nymphs, um, fish a lot of hatches. And this one's a little beta nymph that, you know, it's it's kind of made its rounds in the in the world. Um, there are lots of similar thin flies like this, but this is kind of our take or my take on a little uh, beta nymph. Anyway, this is a 2488, and I'm going to use um, UTC 70 denier thread. So. This is actually pretty critical to the fly. I, I've tried it with other flat threads and this thread really makes the fly. There's a really unique uh, way that we're going to make the body on this one. And so having the correct thread helps a lot. Anyway, also you can see this uh, fancy bobbin that I'm using. So we're trying that out. We're doing some bobbin testing as well. But anyway, to start this out, I'm, uh, I'm going to make sure that my thread's nice and flat. So you can see that sheer uh, or the shine on that thread. It's nice and flat and I want to keep it that way basically for the duration of the fly. So I'm going to wrap it back about halfway and then I'll trim that off. And I'm going to tie in a tail and because this is a curved shank hook I usually like to adjust the hook in the vise and point it down a little bit. It gives me a little bit of room to work with. Now the tail on this is just going to be some Brahma fibers from feather like that. You can use partridge, you could use pheasant, you could use regular hen, you could even use yarn for the tail on this one. But I'm going to pull off about that many fibers. And wait, I got to get back to where I'm going to tie them in first. So I'm going to tie in the tail about right there. And one of the common mistakes that we see on nymph flies, especially, is the tails are too long. On mayfly dry flies, they have pretty long tails, but on the nymphs, they just kind of have short little stubby tails, especially on a betis. So I, I'm going to measure that out, roughly the length of the body and I'm going to pinch that with my off hand and just tie that down with a few wraps maybe even shorten that up a little bit by wiggling those there we go so that's our tail on this fly um, now what I'm going to do is my as I wrap forward because I'm right handed I'm actually putting more twist in this thread so I'm going to spin the thread counterclockwise quite a few times in this. And one of the easiest ways is just to, to put your finger like this and then take your bobbin and twist it. And uh, this one actually has a nice ceramic tube that you can grab onto pretty easily. So once, I, once I've done that, you can see how nice and flat that thread's laying down. And I'm just going to wrap that forward to about right there. And now I'm going to come in and adjust my hook back up to a normal position. Okay, we'll trim that off. Okay. Now, the cool thing about this fly, and it's something that's translatable for, to a lot of different fly patterns, is we're going to make what appears to be a quill body, but it's just going to be thread. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of build up a taper. These little beta snips have a really small taper. Um, and uh, by making the body only out of thread, it also cuts through the water easier. Um, it's a lot easier to tie because there are fewer steps as well. So I'm just going to start building up that body. I'm going to go all the way down and then back up. And you can see my thread starting to bind together a little bit. So I'm going to just unwind it just a few times and then I'm going to go about halfway and then back up 
So there's a little bit of a taper there. So now I'm going to untwist it one more time and then just take those wraps all the way to the back. Now if I were to let my thread hang right here, it would kind of foul up the tail. It'd want to slip off that body. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my, my vise to a 90 degree angle. That way the thread hangs off a little bit uh, more naturally, just straight down. It's not going to slip off the back of that curved shank. So we've got the Delta Brown Chart Pack marker. And I'm just going to come in here and color about an inch and a half to two inches worth of the thread. And make sure that's nice and unwound. And then I'm just going to kind of barber pull that up, spacing out my wraps all the way up the, the fly, about right to there. So you can see that that makes a really subtle rib on the fly without adding another material. It's kind of a, a little fly hack there. So the next step is we're just going to take a little piece of opalescent like Mirage tinsel and this is going to be flashback for the wing case and you don't have to do this uh, you don't have to put flash on it if you want just a natural mat hatch matching pattern and so this this hook is also really cool so I know that my wing case is back as far as it's supposed to go because my thread hangs down and is right at that the hook point so that's that's right where I want to start that wing case so the, the wing case is going to be at, made out of sparkly merger yarn and so I'm just going to take off just a few fibers. I think there are probably 10 or 12 fibers here. And I'm going to even up those, those tips of the fibers and just tie those in. And you know if, if you've got betas that are closer to hatching you could also use like a dark gray or a black you know something a bit darker so once we're here I'm gonna take some super fine dubbing and just barely any like that's how much I'm using and you just barely put enough on there to dirty up your thread okay so that's that's how much dubbing we have on the hook it's just barely any So I want to wrap that up and, and leave quite a bit of room up in the front of the fly like that because we're going to build up kind of a pronounced head. So now we're going to pull over those fibers and as we do that I'll kind of show you how to get it to spread over the, the thorax. So I'm just going to pull it over and kind of wiggle it back and forth and that will flatten it out. And just with two wraps I'm going to secure that and split those fibers in half. So once those, those fibers are split, I'm going to tie some fibers in on either side of the hook shank. And then I'm going to pull the flash over I'll usually put those fibers back in the material keeper. Now this is kind of a tricky part of the fly. My thread's right behind the eye right now. So I'm going to pull this over and do one wrap, wrap of thread right behind the eye. Like that. And then I'm going to move my thread back to right in front of the, the wing case now and pull this flash back over the top. So you can see it kind of gives it that segmented look. So it's got a tiny little head of crystal flash in the front of the, of the fly. So then I'll trim that off and then I'll whip finish it. Just with three really tight turns right there, right, right behind the thorax. So once you've got that tied down, just 
you're going to trim those legs so they, they reach to not quite the half point of the body but just a little bit past the thorax. Just like that. So anyway, we're calling this one the, the mill spec mayfly. Um, and uh, you'll see this body style on several of the flies that, that we've been doing lately. Anyway, go out, catch some fish with it, and if anything, go up and tie up a bunch for the springtime. You can see I got a tacky box full of different colors and different variations of it. Those are out of focus. We'll get a better picture for you soon. I'm Cheech, and I approve of this message.